What's up, everybody? Who's a bastard here? And hang on just a second. See if I can't change the. Uh, we oh. hear the call. Oh my! Well, this is gonna be interesting. There we go. Let's, uh, that sounds like that'll be doable. Um, anyways, <clears throat> hello everybody. Beeble bastard here, and um. Welcome to my first blind let's play. So, I am. It is the middle of the um, summer 2017 uh, Steam sale right now, and uh, I've already picked up a handful of games, which I should not be doing because I have to move next month, uh, which should be a very. Quit interrupting me. I don't care if you're scared. Anyways, um. I, I found like a whole bunch of good games. I got Faster Than Light. I also picked up Final Fantasy VII. That's going to be a fun playthrough uh, here later on. Uh, don't know if I'm going to do a Let's Play of that, or uh, but we'll see. And uh, a couple of other games as well. But I found this uh, interesting tidbit that I had never seen before. Available for a buck thirty. And uh, anybody who knows me knows I am an insane uh, HP Lovecraft uh, Cthulhu Mythos fan. So when I saw this for a dollar fifty, I, was like, waiting for you. I don't give a shit if the reviews are mixed or not. I gotta check this out. So um, yeah, I have never played it before. I did start the game we hear yesterday. The we can see. You. I did start the game yesterday. Uh, this game seems to be kind of glitchy. I guess it came out in 2006. I don't remember hearing about it at all. Uh, but it does seem to have a little bit of trouble sometimes. Like if I hit the escape button, the, the screen goes blue. So if that happens, I'm going to try to edit that out. But that may happen at like the most inopportune time ever. So bear with me on that. Uh, but so far, it seems to be working okay right now. So I just started a new game yesterday, but I'm going to start it over again so we can actually check out the cinematics. But I don't really know what this game entails. I haven't played a little any of it yet, so let's just check it out. Uh, looks like... Uh, we Alright, let's do Private Investigator. Little known fact. Now, in my end, I can fully see... My last case opened in me a new fear, a real fear, a fear of myself, of what I am, and of what I've always been. All that I was is now lost. Hope, purpose, pleasure, all meaningless. I now walk in the shadows between worlds, and it is there I have finally glimpsed upon what lives in the dark corners of the earth. Looks like somebody ventured a little too far into the mental vistas than they should have. Any fans of Lovecraft out there know exactly kind of what's probably going on here. Game tips are currently active. You don't want to see it. Uh, we'll stick with them for now because I have never played this. Um, but if they get too annoying, we'll tell them to shut the fuck up. How's that sound? Okay, six and a half years ago. So, 19... What? 1916? 1915? <sighs>
Robert, this had better be good. What's the beef? Sorry, Jack. We had to call. This fellow will only talk to you. Name's Victor Holt. Don't know any Victor. He's the leader of this weird cult that moved in here a few months back. Got about 20 followers. They've been causing trouble all over town. Stealing, going through folks' trash. Hanging around outside people's homes at all hours. No one ever presses charges, though. They're a screwy bunch. They've got the locals scared. So tonight, we were just passing, you know, doing the normal rounds, when we heard gunshots fired from their property. Gunshots? Hang on there. No one said anything about gunshots. Who have we got out here? Eh, just me, Nichols, and a few new recruits. Well, that's just great. Lead the way, Robert. I better check out this crazy gang of yours. Alright, well, you can kind of tell this game did come out a good minute ago. Okay, alright, so... Alright, so is this first person? Alright. Let me... Let's see here. We're gonna wait. Yeah, let's turn the subtitles on. Make things a bit easier. Uh, I hope the volume's okay. We'll adjust it in the next video. That's a special feature. Okay. Come on, Jack. We haven't got time to hang around. Alright, so it is the 1910s. What's taking him so long? Okay. Something must be wrong. I think... Evening, Jack. Glad you could join the freak show. How's it looking, Henry? I don't like this one bit, Jack. Check the alley on the right. Victor Holt's over there in the shadows. He's waiting for you. Can we trust him? Nope, but we've got you covered. You better take it slowly, though. They're a bit twitchy. Yeah, I'll bet. Cannot tell what is going on right now. I'm completely frozen. That's simple strange. Looks almost like a flaming eye. I should take a closer look. Yeah, let's take a closer look while a battle ensues outside with the fucking... That's the highlight. Pardon me, I am completely at a loss with the controls here. Uh, alright. Uh, save the game, sure. Alright, save it. Is that what that is? Alright. Okay, hey, it looks okay, like an is, eye. Right. Pardon me for just a second. I am going to... Uh... Alright, sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, I have never played this before, so... But the rest of the painting has no real shape. Yeah, I'm gonna turn down the voice. to be slightly louder than the uh... Alright, so there is a uh... Okay, hang on a minute. Oh, alright, I get it. I get it. So... Die, so... You pathetic bastard. so that is a save point thing, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. It's locked. We are completely unarmed, as far as I know, so, uh, not a great state of affairs to be in, but we'll manage. Uh, we just decide to go searching in this house while there's death and destruction going on. So do I have a flashlight? Because it's pretty dark. It won't budge. It won't open. Alright. It's been boarded up. I can see that. It's a little, uh... Hey, it's a little too dark. They said let it make it dark, but uh, it's daytime outside right now. 
So I actually am gonna have to take away from the true horror and turn up the brightness a little bit so I can see what's going on. Ooh, right on. This dude alive? Hello? Poisoning by the looks of it. He's dead. They're all dead. Oh, what's... Oh! Oh, alright, my vision's getting all shaky. Suicide. Or rather, mass suicide. These nuts had some serious issues. I can't open it. Okay, whoa! Alright. There is a presence in here that is affecting my sanity. Alright, so everybody drank... Nothing of interest. This shit, and I can't pick up the book? Like, oh, okay, here A we diary. Go. This will make interesting reading. Alright, so, alright. Picked up your first journal item. Select the book icon in the interface to study your journal. It may reveal vital clues. When the book icon is grayed out, there are no new entries to read. Uh, I don't see a book. Okay, here we go. Alright, so we got like a typical... Alright, the diary of Jack Walters, Mythos, Tombs, and Man. Okay, so let's read this. What is this? I guess I'm becoming a victim of my own success. I guess this is who we are, this Jack Walters guy. I guess I'm becoming a victim of my own success. After closing the last five cases so fast, the papers have been calling me to the local hero, calling me a local hero. But I just had a run of lucky hunches, that's all. I'm just another cop doing his job. So there's a disturbance at the local presidents. It's probably just a bunch of kids hopped up on moonshine. Why call in a detective? Maybe the uniform boys are sore of being out in this weather, and they want to share the joy with the local hero. It wouldn't be the first good-natured prank I've had to take since those uh, newspaper reports. I don't know, though. Something doesn't feel right about it. It's, uh, it's more than just a regular bad feeling. It's hard to explain, but it's strong. I'm probably just tired. Those dreams don't help. I can't remember when I last got a good night's sleep. Must be a month at least. Right about the time I started my run of lucky hunches. The dreams have been getting worse lately. I'm almost afraid to close my eyes. Bourbon helped at first, but not anymore. Yeah, that's yeah. It's only gonna make it worse, brother. Um, the lack of sleep must be affecting my nerves. Well, jitters or not, I better get going. All right, well. So, shit day. So how do I get out? I just hit, oh, okay. All right. A collection of general evidence. A diary of a cult member. All right, so I guess this is how it's like gonna be organized. Like, so you got his diary and the evidence and stuff. All right, diary of a cult member. This should be interesting. All right, August 20, 1915. We have been watching him for two months. Uh, I can feel my anticipation growing as the day of contact grows near. Victor has not yet divulged his final plan for bringing Mr. Walters to us. All I know is that we must succeed. <gasps> That's us. August 24th, 1915. The sermon today was inspiring. Victor enlightened us in the story of the great race, transcending the bounds of time to visit his dreams. Of the conscious things on this earth, and in the ocean depths, we are but servants to a greater design. I can only hope that my faith during these last days will win me favor when our masters step through the gate. August 29th, 1915. The experiments below have claimed more than have one more of our order. Another volunteer is needed, but many are willing. We are truly blessed through our faithful service. Now that his coming grows so close. The preparations are complete, and Victor's plan is in motion. He will arrive soon. Surely by now he must suspect his true nature, or at least question the nature of his gifts. He has come. Finally, it begins. <laughs> okay, and Mythos Tombs and that. All right, so, yeah, all right. So, uh, before I continue here... So obviously I am going, since this is a game based off the works of Lovecraft, um, I am going to be reading anything that we come across, like I'm sure literature is going to play a huge part in this game, so 
Um, as always, in any video like that, um, if you feel that my reading is too slow, pause it, read it yourself, and skip ahead. Or if you're not interested, just go ahead and feel free to skip ahead. And let's continue. What else do we have here? So game time. Oh, okay, I get it. And this narcotic analgesic class helps block pain, but should be used with extreme caution. Okay, this is going to be interesting. And uh, we are now experiencing some serious uh, hallucinations while the world collapses around us outside. Get some here. Oh. Okay. Alright, I am not in control right now. Don't shoot. I'm unarmed. Ah. We've been expecting you, Mr. Walt. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I read. I kinda already knew that, but looks like uh... A key. Damn. He recognized me. Yeah. yeah, dude, didn't you just we just read his diary behind his back. Highlight the item and click on it to use it with the character and object or even by itself. It sounded like he was going to get on the level with what's going on in this joint. He's dead. Looks like a bad case of lead poisoning. Damn. Lead poisoning. Oh, He's dead. Looks like a bad case of lead poisoning. Damn. He recognized me. And it sounded like he was going to get on the level with what's going on in this joint. Alright, so we got a key. seem to recognize me. I don't get it. His body is covered in tattoos, and they were carved into his flesh with something sharp. Alright, I don't see anything else. Oh, I've been sneaking this whole time. I'm like, what? Oh, wait, no. Alright. This is weird. So this is sneak. Everything backs away and you move really slow, and this is... Alright. Weird. Whoa. Someone shooting me? An old wardrobe. It's too heavy to move. I'm not asking you to move it, brother. I was asking you to investigate it. Whatever. Alright. It won't budge. It won't open. With the letter S engraved on it. Alright, so someone's still shooting. It's locked. Alright. Uh, it's locked. The key doesn't fit. Oh, okay. I see. So you have to actually... Okay, that's not the best interface I've ever seen, but let's just keep playing. The lock on this door is broke. It won't open. Alright, so basically what they're saying is that door is locked and will remain that way forever. The lock on this door is broken. And same deal with that. Okay. We've been in there. We've been in there. And we've been in the spooky ritual room. Which, when we walk in here, and, uh, wait, wait, what's this? Can we pick anything up? All right. Well, everything's gone now. But he's dead. Oh. They're all dead. Now, okay. So, so walking over near that thing obviously does something to your head. Right. Cognito hazard, as they call it, in uh, the SCP Foundation. <sighs> Okay. Well, uh, wish there was a. What about here? Oh, all right. Okay. So what we got going on in here? Uh, okay. Can't do anything with that. Uh, typical 2006 graphics. Ah, here we are. As I continue to translate the narcotic fragments. I become more and more eager to contact my Yithian masters. These beings truly are gods to us. Their intellect and knowledge surpasses ours in ways impossible to comprehend. I know now just how insignificant mankind is in the universe. A doomed and simple species thrown up as a side effect of an experiment by the Elder Things. It is a blessing that such flawed creatures as ourselves have such a short and limited future. Very Lovecraft. The 
ogre things. These are spooky looking creatures. With several eyes and tentacles and a barrel like body. You find them in Antarctica. They like to hang out down there. Drive an occasional researcher insane or two. Among other things. Get on the table. Alright, so we read the letter there. Is that all that was in here? Okay, continue. What's in here? They're still firing outside, so... Something is going on. It's too dark to be sure, but that rotting smell tells me these shelves are used for storing food. Okay, so it's supposed to be dark, I was gonna say. Probably right? food, and the rats have been at it. It's an old stove. That's an old stove. That's a box, brother. All right. I can't open it. Damn. Looks like I'm stuck. I might as well check this place out. Yeah, it's that's... unlocked. Was that the... Okay, that was the... The... Oh, all right. Okay. I don't understand. I'm in all of these photos. Well, didn't you read all the diary, brother? They were waiting for you. There must be some kind of mistake. Why would they want me here? That must be an old case. Something I've forgotten. Some screwball with a grudge, maybe. Think. I've got to think. Oh, my. We are hyperventilating, folks. Get a hold of yourself, brother. Oh, my God, it's us. Okay. Oh shit, they've been keeping track of what we do too. Leave home, arrive at station, leave state. Damn, they have been on your ass, dude. Must be an uh, interesting time. Another key. This should fit the door across the hall. Got some, uh, some literature. See, right? No, oh, okay, there's nothing there. Podium sermon, we already read that. The Boston Globe, okay. August 20th, 20th August, 1909. Enlightened or duped inside Boston's strangest church. Those of your readers who live near this, its headquarters and the ordinary looking Boston residents will need no introduction to the Fellowship of Yith, or whatever the cult's name is. For those who have not encountered this mysterious semi-religious group before, a few words of explanation are necessary. Since our country's founding upon the basis of religious freedom, its shores have been home to many small religious groups outside the mainstream. No small number are headquartered in the states of New England, where the pilgrims themselves sought a new world free of religious persecution. But the question must be asked, at what point does a religion become a cult and its trusting adherents, not to mention its blameless neighbors, become victims? That is the fellow, is the question this journal poses in regards to the Fellowship of Yith. In a month-long investigation, our intrepid reporters have diligently sought out the truth behind this so-called church. Its origins are somewhat mysterious, the more so since the group's leaders have declined to be interviewed or to assist our investigation in any way. However, it seems that the Fellowship was founded more than 20 years ago by one Victor Holt, based on a revelation he had received from beyond the confines of this world. Sounds like the typical start for a cult. Holt has not been seen for almost six years. His followers apparently believe that he is communing with the mysterious powers behind his faith and that he is shortly to return with new insights and teachings. All this sounds like a harmless, if eccentric, spiritual group little different from many others. However, those who make their homes near to the Fellowship's headquarters tell a different, more sinister story. The adherents of this obscure sect are to be found loitering on street corners, casting menacing glances at their innocuous neighbors, and frequently engaging in acts of petty crime, which the local police seem powerless to prevent or redress. Okay. Uh, Strange lights have been observed burning in the windows of the old house at all hours of the day and night. They change color unpredictably and cast weird, unintelligible shadows. Even more disturbing are the noises which have been heard to issue from within the mysterious building. 
They include chanting, unearthly music, and worst of all, screams like those of soul lost souls in agony. Many of the sect's neighbors are convinced that its services include human sacrifice or similar atrocities. Those few who dared complain to the police were told that because the house is private property and because there is no such is there's no concrete evidence of any wrongdoing, the most they can do is file a noise complaint. Are the horrors of Salem being reenacted in our city more than two centuries on? Is this fellowship of Yith engaging in unspeakable and criminal acts of worship involving torture and sacrifice? Why is nothing being done to ease the fear and distress they cause to the local community? A source within the police department speaking on the condition of anonymity tell the police that the fellowship is suspected of involvement in a number of local crimes but so far, the lack of evidence and the reluctance of nervous witnesses to come forward have thwarted any official investigation. Very well, we say. Where the police cannot or will not investigate, the Globe shall continue to act in the interests of Boston citizens, fearlessly exposing the truth about this so-called church and its followers. Our findings will be published in these pages over the following months so that they may know the truth. Editors note. It is with great sorrow that the Globe announces the death of reporter, yeah, Howard Adelstone, who was leading the paper's investigation into the Fellowship of Yig when he apparently drowned in Boston Harbor. The coroner has ruled his death as a suicide. Our condolences go out to his family. Yeah. Building up to be a good old-fashioned Lovecraft story. All right. So we've got a silver key with an L engraved on it. So, all right, well, let's get a hold of ourselves here and uh, vacate this disturbing premises. So it, he said it was going to go to this it's one. It's unlocked. All right, so we are in a library of some sort. Okay, oh, this is always where it gets good in Lovecraft shit. I hear some moaning. I hear some shit. You hear that? It appears to be a private study area. There is something going on in here. It All appears right. to be a private study area. The drawer holds an ancient manuscript. The symbols on the front seem to be written in classical Greek. Ooh, must be some mythos shit. Yep. Uh, Narcotica. Narcotica, this manuscript looks medieval but claims to be a translation from the classical Greek of a far older work from before the time of the first humans. The pages are stained, faded, and even burned in some places, making reading difficult. The legible sections tell the history of unthinkably distant antiquity. They speak of races so strange as to be beyond human comprehension and wars fought across the vast gulfs of time and space. There are concepts so utterly alien that they sound like absolute madness. Time travel, flying polyps, mental projection, great race of yith. Makes you dizzy just to read it. And uh, anybody who's uh, ever played Lovecraft or played read Lovecraft before, knowing uh, reading shit, just picking anything up and reading it could uh, probably be uh, damaging to your mental health and maybe even your physical health. There are definitely some strange sounds coming from this side of the room. In a broken mirror. Oh shit. Oh, this is getting. Shit. That did not sound good. Alright. Uh oh. Did we cry? Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, that's not fair. Alright, hold on, guys. I told you this game's a little glitchy. Okay. Oh my goodness, you... the shit I have had to go through to get this shit to work. It is, I uh, was playing this when it crashed, it was about noon today, it is now 10.30 p.m. Uh, I did have to leave and get some shit done uh, during that time. Um, I had to go to Kami Fest and I had to go to somebody's quote unquote baby shower. Uh, which wasn't like the typical, uh, 
usual baby shower. Uh, it was more of a huge cookout that involved alcohol and a lot of other shit. Uh, my uh, co-worker was announcing the uh, gender of his baby. It's a girl. Congratulations to him. Um, anyways, I basically went to a massive hippie festival, came back and the damn thing still wasn't working, tried to patch it, tried to do all kinds of damn shit, broke the game, it wouldn't even fucking work anymore. Now, after hours upon hours of persisting and searching, I think I have finally found the goddamn solution. Everything in the game looks kind of weird now, like I had to turn the mouse sensitivity down, um, but uh, let's hope it works now, so. Just swell. Fucking continues. All right. All right. Yeah, let me just pause the sound effect volume up just a little bit. Dead. The beam must have fallen and crushed his skull. Man, everything is fucked up. Oh, there we go. Dead bodies, and plenty of them. Something dreadful has been going on down here. I could not agree with you more, Mr. Walters. From the markings, he must have been one of their own. I wonder if he volunteered. All right, dude, you... It's kind of funny, it's like his voice... They must have been trying to preserve the bodies. His voice is very calm, but his uh, heartbeat and breath and... Uh, respiration rate say otherwise okay, I'm some seems like these cabinets are used for storing chemicals and medical equipment okay let's continue oh this looks promising Uh, 
The crystal's still warm. Alright. You know, I... Wondering if we could have spoken to that guy. D damn it. Hang on a minute. Alright guys, I just wanted to check real quick. Can we talk to this guy? Good God! What the hell is all this? No? Alright, what happens if we try to take this out while he's still Ah! It's too hot to pick up. All right. Well, it was worth the quite. It was. It was worth checking out, right? Oh, All shit. right. Ah. Sorry, you gotta die. Ah. 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 for dying. All right. The crystal's still warm. Okay. Feels like it's gonna collapse at any moment. All right, we are going down deep, people. Okay. All right, and let me guess, the other crystal. It's a similar shape to the slot upstairs. Six years since I entered that strange house in Boston. But to me, it was just five months ago. Amnesia, the doctors called it, probably brought on by acute mental stress. I remember investigating the far side of the library. There was screaming. According to the police report, they had searched the house for hours, only to find me later collapsed on the floor. When my eyes opened and I spoke, my colleagues recoiled in fear. There was something unnatural in my voice and blank gaze. They committed me to Arkham Asylum where I was diagnosed with severe schizophrenia. As it became clear that I presented no danger to either myself or others, I was released from the asylum's care. I have learned little of my activities in the six years that followed. The accounts I've been able to piece together show much of my time was spent in travel and study. I maintain a fanatical infatuation with the occult delving deep into volumes concerning witch cults and dark legends, often in languages unfamiliar to my own. When I reawakened five months ago, exactly six years after entering that house in Boston, 
no trace was left of what had been a secondary personality. I was myself again, or at least what I believed myself to be. Return to normal life has been a painful process. In recent days, my dreams have been plagued by cosmic landscapes, and I've become fearful of my own reflection. I am beginning to remember things from that day, more than six years past, that I've told no else. Jack Walters. Uh, hello, Mr. Walters. My name's Arthur Anderson. I need your help finding a missing person. I don't take that kind of job. D did you get my package? Um, uh, hold on. What exactly do you want from me, Mr. Anderson? Uh, it's one of my store managers, you see. Brian's his name. Ryan Burnham. Nice lad. He disappeared recently from the first national grocery store in Innsmouth. Innsmouth? I never heard of it. Uh, small fishing town on the coast. <laughs> not far from Arkham. Uh, I'd like to see you in person before you leave. Hold on there a minute. I didn't agree to take this... What the hell? I'll be here all day anyway. Just be sitting in here. Come on, dude. Pull out the, uh... Pull out the bourbon and take the swing. Alright, here we go. Now we got some new literature to read. <clears throat> Excuse me. February 6th, 1922. Night. I have a new client, Mr. Arthur Anderson, a regional manager of the First National Grocery Store chain. It appears that the First National Grocery in Innsmouth was recently burglarized, and manager, one Brian Burnham, is missing. From what I have been able to gather, Burnham is something of a young rogue. A friend of the family, Mr. Anderson, gave him the job in his favor. Burnham is looking like the prime suspect for the robbery. There are a few things that don't add up, not to Anderson, and not to me. For instance, why would Burnham force an entry into the store when he had a full set of keys, free access to the cash register, and combination to the back office safe, to misdirect any investigation? If that was his plan, why did he disappear? Following my conversation with Mr. Anderson, I found out what I could about the ancient town of Innsmouth. For generations, the crumbling seaport and its people have been shunned by neighboring communities. Outsiders are unwelcome there, and there are superstitious tales of a strange element of the town's oldest families. They are of mixed blood, and so the stories go. Whatever that's supposed to mean, the usual hip town prejudice, no doubt. After making a brief visit to Innsmouth, my client came away distrustful of the local authorities. He isn't buying their line, Burnham robbed the place, and wants to know what happened to him. Only one bus goes to Innsmouth, and tomorrow afternoon I'll be on it. It feels good to have a purpose after five months trying to break through my amnesia. I also feel a little apprehensive. Maybe it's the wild stories about the town, or maybe it's just because I haven't had a case in so long. 